He is known for his extensive military career and his contributions to the field of aviation. He is recognized for his role as Chief of the Air Corps and Commanding General of the United States Army Air Forces. His name is Henry H. Arnold. In the realm of military history, one name stands out as a legend, Henry Harley Hap Arnold, an American general whose impact on the field of aviation is unmatched. Born into a world on the brink of flight, Arnold's fascination with aviation led him to become one of the first military pilots in the history of the United States Air Force. Overcoming his fear of flying, he played a pivotal role in expanding the air service during World War I, earning the admiration of General Billy Mitchell. Arnold's true rise to prominence came prior to World War II when he assumed command of the Army Air Forces. Under his leadership, the Air Forces experienced an unprecedented expansion, growing from a modest organization to the largest and most powerful Air Force in the world. Arnold's commitment to technological research and development was instrumental in the advancements of intercontinental bombers, jet fighters, radar systems, and global airlift capabilities. His visionary approach laid the foundation for modern air power and atomic warfare. Known affectionately as, HAP, a nickname derived from, HAPPY, Arnold's persona reflected his enthusiasm and dedication to his craft. Whether it was his early days as a silent film stunt pilot or the unwavering support of his wife, Arnold's passion for aviation and his role as a leader earned him the respect and admiration of those around him. In the midst of World War II, Henry found himself at the helm of a monumental endeavor that would shape the course of history. With the creation of the United States Army Air Forces, he became its chief, wielding authority over both the Air Corps and Air Force Combat Command. Though this consolidated command structure provided the air arm with its own staff, it fell short of the autonomy Arnold had envisioned. Nevertheless, he pressed on, focusing on developing strategic plans to defeat potential enemies. In July, President Roosevelt requested production requirements to combat the enemy, and Arnold's Air War Plans Division responded with a bold proposal. The plan, known as AWPD-1, called for the establishment of 24 groups of long-range B-29 bombers in Northern Ireland and Egypt to target Nazi Germany. It also emphasized the production of consolidated B-30 success for intercontinental bombing missions. Arnold's endorsement of this plan showcased his foresight and determination. After the United States entered the war, Arnold's influence continued to grow. He was promoted to Lieutenant General in December 1941 and, in March 1942, played a pivotal role in securing full autonomy for the Army Air Forces. Acting on an executive order from President Roosevelt, the War Department granted the AAF independent status, separate from the Army Ground Forces and Services of Supply. Arnold's leadership led to the abolition of the Air Force Combat Command and the Office of the Chief of Air Corps, and he assumed the role of AAF Commanding General. Recognizing the need for strategic revisions, Arnold directed the AWPD to update its estimates in August 1942. The resulting plan, AWPD-42, reaffirmed earlier priorities but expanded the list of industrial targets to 177. It ranked the German Luftwaffe and submarine force as the top priorities for destruction. Additionally, Arnold made the decision to concentrate the deployment of the B-29 bomber in the Far East, focusing on dismantling Japanese military power and targeting combustible cities. Amidst his military responsibilities, Arnold also championed the inclusion of women in the war effort. He approved the establishment of the Army Air Force's Women's Flying Training Detachment, which was directed by aviator Jacqueline Cochran. This progressive move showcased Arnold's commitment to maximizing the resources and talents available to the Air Forces. Henry H. Arnold's unwavering leadership, strategic planning, and advocacy for autonomy solidified his position as a key figure in the success of the United States Army Air Forces during World War II. His contributions would leave an indelible mark on the course of the war and the future of aerial warfare. Do you want to explore more politician or military strategist? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.